Okay, as you can see, out of the oven and wire brushed, see what I'm up against here. Now what I got to do is very carefully go in here with a die grinder and knock the top off and try to lightly get it to break them edges where they're flush to where the nickel becomes part of it. See, a lot of this stuff right there is embedded... Um, flux from the powder which you know sometimes even something as simple as taking this scraper knife right here see look there's chunks of it going away you got to go back a little bit with it to get uh, to get back to where it actually blended with it so I'm gonna go ahead and start the grinding procedure and blending to pull that out to get it where my uh, surfacing machine can go in there and clip it and straighten it out. Okay, to level it, I just simply take about a 50 or 60 grit pad on my angle grinder. Just take and run my fingers across it until I start to feel it kind of leveling out. That way when I get it pretty close to level I'll stop and I'll let the machine shop do the rest of it. But I'll try to put it in because a lot of these shops they don't like to because they're scared that it messes up their cutters uh, on their cutting machines. The thing I wanted to point out is I take my die grinder first, you can see the little marks, and I just kind of come in here and touch the tops of them and kind of knock, knock the rough edges off so that I can take my orbital grinder and it's kind of level, but you gotta be real careful because it's real easy to roll and you don't want to create a problem bigger than the one that you got. But if you see that on these, here's some I can show you. You can see where I've already went in there with my die grinder and kind of leveled the top a little bit with my burrs and then that's when I go in there with my uh, orbital sander and hit it and try to pull it down. All right, just wanted to show you my technique in that. And what we're getting ready to do now is magnaflux the heads. For this, of course, got just my magnetic crack detector. You always start out like this right here first. I usually, I, there's a crisscross pattern that you use. Of course, now the nickel isn't ground down yet, <coughs> but this is going to tell me if I've got something that's so severely bad that I don't even know need to take it to surface yet. Wow. Boy, if all the rest of them turn out this good, I've done a great job with this. Okay. I'm going to try to get you in there a little closer. Okay. Now, as you can see, just a touch. Wow, please work okay. These are such rare heads, it just breaks the heart to see something like this busted or messed up where they couldn't be repaired. Everything so far is okay, not a problem. You can see where it kind of lines up around the outer edges. That's to be expected because that's where the weld is, you know, look, see, that my foot got in the way. That's one problem with filming by yourself. You have to do everything. And um, 
right here, which was the worrisome spot. Wow. I think I got me a winner here. That's the cross X pattern I was telling you about. You do it both ways to fully magnetize the cylinder. And I can't see one single thing. Alright. So far at this point, it does not look like I got a problem with the head. Um, to be fully sure, I, I did wire brush and chambers, clean all that out. To be totally sure, I have to surface the head, then bring it back, and that way all the flux will go out. Plus, what that will also tell you, you'll be able to see how well the nickel blended with the iron in the head because all you'll see is a slight color variation. The nickel is usually just a touch brighter, but you should see no edges or anything around the corners of the sides. All right, so until I get it back from surfacing, this will be it. We'll finish this up and then we'll have a nice little interesting thing on how to use the maintenance welding number 10 torch. What we're going to talk about right now is a very common problem. Uh, you really see it today on new heads when they come right out of the box like aluminum heads and they have all this overhang in the seat area. What this is known as, see how the seat area right here, then there's this big ridge. This is the meat in the chamber right here. Either by the way the factory did it by using their uh, stone tools or machine tools to come in here and form the seat. They dig away at this chamber leaving all this meat and we're talking probably about 50,000 sometimes I've seen them as high as a hundred where these ridges see it goes all the way around the valve but it is really bad and you can take your finger and feel these big humps. The problem is that it dramatically hinders airflow and wet fuel uh, distribution. Okay, imagine this. If you've only got a 500 lift cam and 60 to 70 thousandths of this is blocked off where you've got a valve in here and it won't even let it out, that means that uh, you're not even got a 430 lift cam because it's being blocked by this area here called a machinist ridge. Now, the, it's a painful way to do this and it takes a lot of talent. It took me years to get it, but this is how that this is done. You got to go in here and level that part, level with the machine, with, with, with the, where the flat part or uh, the 30 degree angle is.
Now, as you can see, I've taken it down quite a bit, but there's still some there. But now this is where you got to be careful. Because in this area right here, remember your valve seat's going to go there. Well, this one's getting bigger valves. So hopefully, well, it's something I know because I've done enough of them that by lowering this and getting it where you barely see it skip and touch along the 30 degree angle, when I go in there to put the oversized valve in, it's going to come out in here and that ridge will disappear. Uh, this takes a great deal of time. Uh, typically on a set like these heads right here, I'll probably have about 12 hours or more just importing the combustion chambers because it's got one of them machinist ridge that the whole chamber is elevated and it has to be blended so that it rolls and to do that you have to use a small egg and then <coughs> excuse me a small ball uh, that's probably a quarter inch then you go to a small egg and then a cylinder to go in here and wipe the sides out but the gains are well worth it there's probably more airflow right here by doing this and altering the shape of this chamber than there is in everything I'm going to do in the porting on the head. It's that much difference. So this is getting into when you uh, have gotten a good level of skill, a lot of different burrs, where you can concentrate the material removal in such a small area as not to roll over because know this, you go in here porting on this area here and you make the divot too deep anywhere where that seat goes when you go to put that in there you're going to have to put a hardened seat in the head because you just dug a, a low spot that won't let the valve seal against it alright I just wanted to take a minute out to show the machinist ridge because on this Ford 390 head it is very um, extrusive coming off of the 30 degree angle and once again, like I said, it is such a rare set of heads. I found out this was made in 1960. Uh, that this shape was there back then. And what it's going to look like when I'm done, it just blows me away. Sometimes I wonder if we're smarter than the older guys at all. Really, it's just we have materials and technology now they didn't have back then. Anyway, okay, we're going to start from a stock chamber. I'm going to show you how I begin with the ball to do this. See if you can follow me.